Senator Simons, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the government representative, if he's willing to accept more questions. Yes, of course. All right. Um, you are a constitutional law professor, and I am not, so I don't presume to lecture you on, on your subject of expertise. But you will know, of course, that in Starson v. Swayze, uh, Madam Justice Beverly McLaughlin, Chief Justice Beverly McLaughlin, as she was then, wrote that mental illness without more does not remove capacity or autonomy. Uh, and that was an important decision that provided that people who were deemed to be mentally ill still had the right to refuse treatment as they can, I believe, in every province now except for British Columbia. It seems to me that if we acknowledge that every patient with a mental illness is a discrete, unique case, that mental illness does not necessarily remove capacity or autonomy, and that mental illness, which is not defined in this bill, includes many things which we now know to have physiological, neurological, biochemical uh, causes. Is it not somewhat patronizing for the government to assume that it is acting in the best interests of people with psychiatric conditions by protecting them from the capacity to exercise their right to medical aid in dying? You went on at some length to describe the way in which uh, doctors uh, are trained professionals who have the capacity to assess individual cases. I'm just wondering why the government is throwing up its hands and simply saying that there is no way to assess capacity in a case of a psychiatric or neurological condition. Well, th well thank you for your question. I mean, there, there are two things, and I'll try to be briefer in my answers. I, I apologize uh, for the time that I'm taking. These are important questions. Um, the first is that the evidence that the government had before it, has before it, and indeed evidence that was replicated, if that, was, that was expressed uh, in the pre-study, shows that the medical community is divided as to whether or not at this stage of the development of criteria uh, uh, ranging over all the issues um, from uh, that, that, that bear upon this, whether it was uh, uh, an appropriate uh, time to legislate or not, and the decision of the government based upon the conflicting evidence of the medical professionals to whom you, you referred um, was that we're not there yet. But the other point that I would make, and I know this might strike one as a narrow point, but it's fu a fundamental point. Bill C-7 falls clearly within the framework and does not depart from the framework of the Carter decision. And the Carter decision, the constitutional right to access to medical assistance in dying, is not granted to each and every person who is suffering intolerably under circumstances intolerable to them. That's a horrible thing to contemplate. But that's not the constitutional right that Carter recognized. And the and, the law, and it, the, rather, the constitutional right was for those who are suffering intolerably and who are suffering from a grievous medical condition, and goodness knows many of the uh, mental disorders are as grievous as any other form of disorders, but they are not all irremediable. And that is one of the challenges that the government, any government, would have in legislating a proper framework uh, where the only underlying condition is a medical disorder of that kind. And, and, it's, and, and that is, I think, the real challenge for us as parliamentarians. Our hearts break when we contemplate the denial of access to people who are suffering intolerably. Uh, but the constitutional right that Truchon uh, acknowledges, that Carter acknowledges, and uh, I'm sorry, Carter acknowledges and the C7 embodies does not go that far. Were the, were the constitutional right to be framed differently, and perhaps someday it will be, we would have a different conversation. So I think despite, in, in my speech, I laid out all the considerations, and they included issues of, of, of capacity. But I was at pains to underline that in so many cases, so many persons suffering from a variety of mental disorders clearly do have the capacity to make 
uh, informed consent. But there is still a problem in some subset of, of cases, and there is still a real problem, as all of us know from, from, the, from our own experiences with people, friends, and family um, who have suffered, for example, from deep clinical depression. There is, there is uh, a real problem in concluding that in the pits of the despair that some people can find themselves in, where there is no, seems no hope, that in fact, with treatment, whether pharmacological treatment or, or, or talk therapy, meditation, or what have you, people do get better. They do, they do develop their zest for life. But in the moment of despair, you don't believe it. Now, so the government made a decision based upon the conflicting input from the medical professions. It stayed focused on the, on the scope of the rights guaranteed by Carter. And in so doing, it has raised a real serious constitutional controversy that we're in the process of debating. But it was done in good faith, based upon the best evidence that it could uh, in order to, uh, uh, to do the right thing. I hope that answers your question. Supplemental question, if that's all right. So far, so Senator Simon. All right. There are many, many, many kinds of mental illness that are not depression nor related to depression. And it seems to me that what you're saying is that because a mental illness might someday be remediable, that you're asking people to live in what may un be unbearable physical and uh, emotional torment on the hopes that one day there might be a remedy. That is not the same test that we are asking for people who, for example, have ALS or advanced uh, multiple sclerosis or, or any other uh, inclusion body myositis, other conditions that may trigger access to MAID under C7. Why is it only people who are suffering from this particular category of psychiatric illnesses who are asked to wait in torment in the hopes that one day there may be remediation for their condition? Well, Senator, I, I, again, I mean, you're, you, you, we can't help but be touched as I am um, by, by, your, by your remarks. And, and, and it's going to sound Now, let me, let me rephrase this. First of all, the government has taken all of this into consideration, including the, the input and advice of experts that it consulted, experts that appeared before it. And, um, and despite the, the truth of what Senator Lankin uh, reminded us, that there is progress and movement in this area, um, there is no evidence uh, that, there I that there are uh, a a a agreed upon standards for the medical community uh, to, um, to uh, in pl place uh, uh, in either in, in law uh, or in their professional uh, associations um, to, 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 to properly and, uh, and responsibly deal with that. Um, And the other point is to re return to Carter and to C14 and to uh, C7. The right, the constitutional right, is where the um, medical condition is grievous and irremediable. And we do not yet, and though of course it is true that in any given cases, a competent uh, practitioner may come to his or her view that this particular condition is not irremediable, is or is not remedial. That is, that the person uh, uh, would, will or will not respond to treatment. Um, and you're perfectly right to point to a number of, of other conditions. Where death is still is imminent, 
that remains, access to, 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 to MAID remains open. That track has not been uh, eliminated. And, that, and C7 does that, importantly. Um, but where the medical community has not arrived at standards for determining in advance whether a particular medical uh, condition or disorder, or even how to classify which ones are or not, um, then it, it was, it, the, the government took the view that it was, it would be imprudent not to uh, legislate in this area. But it was not for lack of compassion for the suffering. We all recognize it. We've all seen it around us.